WBSM presents Time Out with Coach. Time Out. In this session, we will deal with the subject of consistency. Consistency doesn't sound glamorous, but it's the key to glamorous results. If you tie a rope to a large boat, and I love boats and I've, I've uh, done this before, uh, and you yank on the, the rope, nothing happens. The boat may slightly tilt, but it really won't change positions. But if you exert a steady pull on that rope, gradually the boat will come to you. Life is exactly like that. You can yank at life, you can take a stab at it, but really not much happens. But if you exert a steady pull, life will come to you. The key, consistency. It's one of the most difficult things to establish. Our bodies love consistency. The world we live in seems to hate it. So it's up to you. Consistency is the virtue, the vital virtue, that turns other virtues into habits of character. In other words, our character is what we practice consistently. So if you want to change your character, then you have to practice what you want to change consistently. Stephen Covey wrote the classic Seven Habits of Highly Effective People in 1989, and it has had extremely wide distribution. In the book, he stressed the importance of making your virtue a habit, that is, repeating a behavior until it becomes a subconscious practice, doing it over and over again. Habit is repeating your behavior until it becomes subconscious. The key, of course, again, is consistency. It's extremely important that you repeat what you're doing until you don't even think about it. Uh, Recently, I had the uh, challenge of teaching somebody to drive a standard shift or a stick shift. In fact, this stick shift had six gears. The person I was teaching had never uh, driven a stick shift at all let alone one with six gears. And so uh, they had to change how they thought about the whole experience of driving. What I found is to get a particular result, you had to practice a particular behavior over and over and over until it becomes subconscious. You don't even want to think about shifting gears. You just want to do it. And the virtue of driving a standard shift without destroying your transmission or your engine or having a wreck is that consistency has made it a habit. It's not always good, by the way, consistency, because sometimes you can have consistent bad habits, and there are people that do that. In fact, I've noticed that in uh, certain things, we already have bad habits and don't realize it. Some somebody or uh, a friend perhaps or a coach may say you need to change that and you think you are when in fact you really are not. In the game of golf, for instance, I've noticed that if you take a mulligan, the odds are pretty high you're going to do the same thing the second time, even though you think you're changing something, but you haven't. Why? Because your original behavior was a habit. It was deeper than the conscious mind. I remember a story my father used to tell about uh, a group of men who were gathered around the gravesite of the worst man in town who had just passed away. And each one waited for the other to try to think of something positive to say about this man. Finally, after a good long pause, one man uh, spoke up and he said, Well, you have to say one thing about him. He was as bad all the time as he was some of the time. He was consistent. So consistency itself doesn't mean it's a good thing. It means that if it's going to be a good thing, you have to be consistent in the good things that you want to do. 
And, and Covey didn't use the word consistency, as I recall. He called it habits. But consistency is the key to both success and failure. If you're consistently practicing um, a bad form, you're going to wind up with a bad result, and you may become very frustrated because you don't even know what it is you're doing. That happens a lot. Good coaches teach fundamentals, and they, they, they drill their players through repetitive practice until the fundamentals become a habit or automatic. You know, some, some players don't like the drills, but the only way to make it an automatic or natural part of your character is to do the drill, to practice the fundamentals. Musicians practice until their fingers are educated, till their ears are educated. And you can teach your fingers to such an extent you're not even aware of the chords or the notes that, uh, that you're forming. But they do it through repetitive motion. Consistency. A friend of mine was a great violinist, and he had this large brown callus on his jaw. And I wondered what it was. And then I realized it was the result of his practice, his consistency. The violin rested against that place on his face day in and day out until it formed a brown callus. But he was a major violinist in the Detroit Symphony. So if you're going to do well, you're going to have to practice, and you need to know what it is you're practicing. Practice the right things. Good character, like honesty, service, good family life, keeping your word, all of that is a result of good habits that overrule bad situations. Principle-based behavior. This is something Covey mentioned in his book. That is, basing our behavior on sound principles, not on emotions or situations or projecting a personality, but have underlying principles that determine what you're going to do before the situation even arises. You ever hear the phrase, you can set your clock by that person? You can depend on that person. Or did you ever hear the phrase, you never know what you're going to get? You never know which team is going to show up. Well, the latter indicates people who are never going to be champions because they're inconsistent. And they may be great one day, but lousy the next. Inconsistency will destroy what has been built by one's abilities. There are lots of principles. I would suggest that you do a little exercise and name some of the principles that guide your life. You may have to think about it a little bit because they may be subconscious to you, but they're there. Otherwise, then you're being emotionally driven or you're being circumstantially driven. There, here's some principles. One is selfishness consumes, service produces. Why is that true? Because selfishness devours things. It all goes in. And it is all for self. And so it's sort of like a black hole. Uh, selfishness is a terrible thing. Service contributes. It gives life. It gives resources. And it blends with what others are giving to make uh, new and wonderful things. That's called uh, being uh, an entrepreneur or uh, being a steward or being a capitalist in some, in some regards. Um, here's another principle. Faithfulness brings increase. Now that's a principle that's enunciated in the scripture, that if you just keep doing a thing uh, that is based on sound thinking, it will bring an increase. Uh, that it's, it's like uh, the Bible speaks of the ant that prepares in winter. It 
doesn't move large amounts, but it just keeps moving small amounts. Another principle is sowing determines reaping. A lot of people are waiting for harvest. They never sowed any seed. I've heard it said some people are waiting for their ship to come in. They never sent one out. Here's a, a principle that is, I think, common sense, but I've heard it a lot. You probably have too. Better to get 10 men to work than to do the work of 10 men. Now, if that's a guiding principle, we not only work, but we're always getting other people involved in the work. When you forget that principle, you try to do it all by yourself. Uh, my dad used to have a principle. It's called many hands make light work. Uh, he believed that uh, everybody should get into it. And he did not allow somebody to sit by while everybody else was working. And uh, that's a great principle. Now, of course, my dad's gone, but it's a principle around our house. You hear the children say it. The grandchildren say it. It's something that has continued with us. Well, it would be a great exercise to sit down and say, what are some of the principles that are guiding my life? And uh, think about it. Because when you get back into the uh, adversity, you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. Let me just make a couple more comments before we conclude time out. Creation works by consistent principles. Remember this. You're part of creation. Your life and thinking needs to blend with creation. We're here. Uh, I am not one of those, I trust you are not, who believe that all of this just happened um, because that would be illogical. Um, creation is predictable. There is a predictableness about the time. You say, well, it's this time of day based on what we're doing uh, in our orbit around the sun. We predict seasons. We can tell you the exact day when a new season will begin. We predict various cycles of life, not only on Earth, but in the universe. It's amazing that the stars are all moving, and yet they're in the same place. There is a certain consistency. In fact, without what I'm saying being true, there will be no math, no physics, no chemistry, no geometry, and really no business. It all depends on consistency. Random living, circumstantially based activity is a formula for failure. I'm not saying we should never change, but it ought to be based on principle and not on convenience. Helter-skelter means chaos. People who are uh, acting just based on their feeling of the moment or what seems good or acceptable for the moment eventually will find themselves in the midst of failure and will not know how to get out of it because principle provides the path. The key to effectiveness is not image, it's not personality, it's not our intentions, it's consistent action. What are some of the solutions to our problems? Well, examine your life and the principles. Don't take the wrong road and hope for good results. Examine your results. Are they what you want? Are they what you started out to get? Change who you are to get what you want. And remember this, who you are is the result of the habits that you practice. Be accountable to change. That is, if you're struggling with change, Find a friend or find a mentor, somebody, and say, this is how I want to change. Hold me accountable. Hold me to consistency because that's the only way I'll ever really change. Your best interest lies in the interest of others and not yourself. And so change in order to benefit others in your life, your family, your friends, your clients. I want to encourage you. It's not too late. The best is yet to come. That's something else my dad used to say. Adopt two ideas. 
I will change and grow. Secondly, I will serve those around me because my best interest lies in the interest of others. Well, time out is over. This ain't no game. For more information on Time Out with Coach or CSM, please visit www.csmpublishing.org. 